with great regret and great sadness, I want to do this tribute to my dear departed friend, Alan Roger Curry. If you're unaware, Alan passed almost two weeks ago. And I think he passed December 4th. I'm not 100% certain of the exact date. But I knew Alan before YouTube. You, Alan used to have this show called on Blog Top Radio. And actually called into the show quite a few times. Alan and I never met in person which is one of my regrets because I could have made that happen. I just didn't for some reason. But Alan had blog talk radio and I called in quite a few times. And Alan and I shared a lot of similar attributes. Alan, Alan was into BDSM and I used, we were Facebook friends. And also protect your Facebook account because that Facebook account, I was friends with Alan Roger Curry, a few other notable people, and their Facebook friend list is full, so we, we can't connect anymore. But I used to share all types of stuff with Alan, and Alan would share stuff with me, and I talked to Alan maybe two weeks before he passed. And if you didn't know, Alan has publicly put on his YouTube channel, that he was battling type two diabetes. I don't know what caused his death, but knowing, just taking the things that we know, Alan was almost 60 years old. He had an issue with diabetes. He had kidney problems. Uh, Alan talked about his health issues here and there. He never went into great detail, but he did talk about them. And I feel that the kidneys, the high blood pressure, and all of this other all stuff. As someone who had a heart attack in 2019, I am very aware and I'm very sensitive to people who are my age or in my age range. I am 56 who are passing on. And, you know, Alan influenced, I'm going to say, 90% of the black manosphere. There are many people who took from Alan's talking points. There are many people who alpha male strategies just straight up stole Alan stuff, pretty much. Uh, there's a lot of people who used his content, used his talking points, and refused to give Alan his proper due. And I know that irritated the hell out of Alan. I know that personally it irritated him because once again, we shared a lot of stuff. And if you remember last October, when the internet tried to cancel me, Alan and a few other people put up videos, public videos defending me. And I am forever grateful to Alan and those other people who put up videos defending me and saying what I did wasn't illegal, and a lot of people were just crazy. Alan was actually in the chat uh, on that debacle because showing up, appearing on the lead attorney show was a mistake on my part. It was a mistake. And Alan was in the comments, but here's the thing these people didn't want to hear truth. And that's one of the things I greatly respected about Alan. Alan dealt with the truth. And you know, he will be sorely missed and he's not going to get the acclaim that Kevin Samuels got, who also died this year. But in my opinion, based upon what I know, because like I said, I knew Alan before YouTube from his blog talk radio show and we became Facebook friends and we used to communicate quite a bit. Um. I would say from a philosophical standpoint on talking points in dogma, Alan had more of a direct impact on the manosphere 
than Kevin Samuels. I, I, I will stand by that. And one of the things that Alan and I, and actually when I had my Disruptive Mail channel, Alan came on the show and we were talking about why men will not walk up to women and talk to them. And he's just scared of rejection. And that, that's one of the things. Alan wasn't a punk. He wasn't a sissy. He wasn't scared. He would go up to a woman and tell her what he wanted from that woman in the first 30 seconds. And because I practiced similar things, my approach wasn't directly mode one. It was it included talents, uh, tan it included elements of mode one plus my own spin on it. So Alan and I used to have some really deep conversations because I would send him uh, screenshots of the conversations I was having with women and, you know, just being straight up, just being straight up. And I, I feel that Alan would be deeply missed. And a lot of people, I don't think they truly understood the frustration of being the creator of something and having people jacking your shit. Uh, as someone who went through with my first book, Making Money A to Z was story, I had literally a website that literally put all my talking points on their website. And I had to send them a cease and desist to get it off. Because here's the thing. When you create something, and Alan created something, Alan originated something, and for someone to steal your original concept, it just pisses you the fuck off. Because these people are cheating. These people are. And I literally can watch so many YouTube creators that I can tell instantly from their talking points that they were influenced by Alan. And many, many people will not give Alan Roger Curry his due. They just will not. Because Alan, you know, and Alan and I had a conversation about being the other man. Uh, like Alan, I used to mess with married women. And when you occupy that position, your understanding of women goes through the roof. And Alan and I had some really deep conversations about that because, you know, it was like I told him about this chick that actually was on the phone with her husband and told her husband, I love you. And then proceeded to suck my dick. When you witness something like that. You cannot, but you, you, well, fe raw naked female nature is cold. And so many men are blinded by it because they cannot accept the duplicity that a woman can show or display towards you. And this is one of the reasons I feel that Alan's books spread outside of the black manosphere. Alan had many, many clients who were not black. He had many, many consulting clients. He had many, many people by his book. And Alan was outside of the black manosphere. And that's something that many people, content creators in the black manosphere, cannot make a claim to it because 99% of their audience is black. Alan did not have that situation. Alan was universal. Alan was all over the place. And Alan, because men understood that, you know, I can say with 100 percent certainty that when you practice mode one, you will be way more successful than women virtually using any other dating strategy or system. I can stand by that. I can stand on that because that's one of the things that I did. And one of the things that I talked about and Alan, because I used to share some of the insights that I got from my Craigslist protocols and I would share some of the emails with him and he was just like, man, that just, that's mind blowing because even though we never met in person, I feel that we were brothers and we had a similar mindset, a similar thought process. And it is so sad that Alan has passed on prematurely. He was 59. He had just recently got married, had a son, you know, and Alan. And, you know, I never said anything to Alan, but 
I can tell in his videos, Alan wasn't well. If you just look at his photos, you could tell the last two years, Alan hasn't been well. And it, it's just one of the things. And as someone who has experienced a health crisis, I can understand that without health, regardless of how much money you have in the bank, your life is going to suck. I feel a lot of great uh, gratitude that with my health crisis, I got the best treatment I was taken care of. I had someone waiting on me hand and foot. And now that I, I've made a full recovery, um, I cannot tell you the importance of monitoring your health, getting your checkups, because, you know, I worked out and I thought I was good, but I was eating bad and my my blood pressure was through the roof. That's what took me out. High blood pressure and a complete blockage. And um, you guys, you got to go to the doctor. You got to get your checkups. You got to monitor your blood pressure, especially if you're a black male in the East United States. And uh, I salute you, Alan. I wish you well. Rest in peace. And it was a pleasure to know you. It was a pleasure to communicate with you. It was a pleasure to dialogue with you because Alan was one of the few people, Alan and Ron Wills were some of the people that I could be 100% blunt with and they got it. They absolutely got it. And um, man, it is just such a tragedy that Alan is gone because I know a lot of people didn't get Alan. A lot of people wish he didn't do his rants. I used to love it when Alan would do a rant and go off on people. I used to love it. I used to love Rambo. And I think to a degree that those Rambo rate rants and rages were coming, which were coming quite frequently in the last two years. That was something that attributed to his early demise because stress is nothing to be played with. Stress is a mofo. Stress will take you out. And I feel that's one of the contributing elements. Uh, Alan had gallbladder surgery about two years ago. Uh, he had COVID. And this is something else, too. And once again, I do not know the exact cause of Alan's death. But I do know that people who have COVID often have pronounced side effects. So that could have been a contributor. Once again, I don't know. I'm just speculating at the moment. But, you know, this is a tribute to my friend, uh, someone that I had a great deal of respect for, someone that I enjoyed talking to. And it is very, very sad that Alan Roger Curry is no longer with us.